everyone, Rich Redmond here. Welcome to episode 16 of Pick Rich's Brain. My guest is Ben Caesar, and we're talking about how he got the gig with Brad Paisley, how aging is a choice, traditional grip, and all things food, fashion, and fun. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 16 of Pick Rich's Brain, filmed right here in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee at Crash Studios. I'm so excited for my 16th guest, Mr. Ben Caesar! Yeah! Good. 19 yeah. years with country music star Brad Paisley. We were talking about when you got your gig, and I said, oh, my 19 years. I've had my gig for 19 years. We're survivors. We're yeah. thrivers. Welcome to Crash we're Studio, man. Yeah, I love it. Dude, it's, 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 I'm so glad that you're... crash that, that, that Is you're, that a word? It's crash Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's, let's hashtag it. 19 years with Brad Paisley. Yep. Um, at least 10 records. You say there's more. Yeah, and you've played more. on a, a you played on all these records. All of them but one. So you so you broke the rules because you remember back in the days when we moved here in the mid 90s after the big country boom, yeah. they said, "Hey boy, you're either a road musician or you're a recording musician." And you said, "Nope." Well, no. I mean, I I took whatever I could get. Well, Brad right. said no. Nope. Right, right. Brad said Brad said no. I like this guy's drumming. Yeah. Um, I was watching your Vic Firth, your artist Highlight. When was that? Which one? It the, was like uh, you were at Gillette. Okay, and, yeah. And your fingers were all taped up like Stuart Copeland. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was before I built up my uh, resistance. Yeah. Well, how long have you been playing Match Grip? Did you switch or did I, I mean? Switched. I mean, to, to traditional. I switched to trad in two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. It took about a year. I think it was during that year uh, when we did that. It took a year to kind of, you know, get it to the point where I. Could didn't think about it. It's yeah. bold. It's bold, man. You know, when I went to school with uh, Keith Carlock, oh. and he always had this gigantic, uh, disgusting yeah. eye of the beholder. Here, like, yeah, I have that. Well, that's what like I was, was taping. Like, like a blister. It was like yeah. Just a no, they say when you play Dungeons and Dragons, not that I ever did, there was this creature called the Beholder, and it was this giant floating pussy you thing. You got farther with on it than I did. And, yeah, you uh, yeah. go quite a bit of it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was never a Dungeon I master. got like 10 minutes on the paper and the dice, and I went, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, this is too much for me. Oh my god, I'm sweating here already in wow. Crash Studio. But so, I mean, we talk about anything and everything yeah. on this podcast. But you know, it's always great if we can have some good educational takeaways sure. for drummers, musicians that are out there that are wanting to up their game, or maybe they're a young player they haven't gone to college yet. Mm -hmm. You went to tell us where you're from, and yeah. you went to Berkeley. Right? Went to Berkeley. Yeah. In uh, Berkeley was just a way. You know, I'm from the East Coast, so Berkeley was a way for East Coast musicians to kind of delay the onset Reality. of the real world. Right. You could buy yourself four years and go to a place where there were people like you. And that was the benefit of Berkeley. It, it wasn't for me so much at the time, the, uh, the faculty and just the you know the labs and all that it was it was being in an environment with a bunch of kids who yeah. were thrown into the experiment like I was right. man what a wake up call like minded individuals well and brilliant ones too yeah. it, it was a slap in the head man because uh, you know here I am from Morristown which is a small colonial town Morristown New Jersey yeah real it kind of has a town square it's like a village and uh, I was the big fish right so I was feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> From the age of nine to eighteen, yeah, and I go to Berkeley thinking, you know, I'll hang, right? I right. got my shit together. I go there, and there's kids that are doing things that are not only articulated, but mature, mature, right. yeah, and and just and I and in one day, my whole world just just got shattered. <laughs> um, and I've had therapy to recover mm -hmm. from this, like yeah. literally, like EMDR, like you're not that bad, you know, and <laughs> you, you know what I mean, like oh hypnosis. Where, well, what happened was, and even while, even during a lot of my time with Brad, it was just sort of, uh, I, you know, I had my gig and, and we played on the records, but at home I was trying to continue my personal practice. The personal development, yeah. Yeah, and it was... A lot of those messages from Berkeley that I that I couldn't stop thinking. I was really hard on myself. I'd go down. So who was your teacher like there? Uh, well, there were at the time, you know, they only had a small faculty 
uh, experience for private lessons. So right. it was a it was a couple guys that we had. I remember Joe Hunt mm -hmm. um, and Bob Tamani. I really wanted Ian Fruman uh, at the time. Yes, and was there uh, Cameron Denard? He no. wasn't there yet. No, yeah. I would love. You know, the whole things change. You know, they have Mike Mangini in there. Mm -hmm. They had Rod Morgenstein. Yes. Um, there weren't guys like that. You know, that were kind of these A-list hero mm -hmm. guys. Um, but but the fact that I mean, these guys could play, but. Um, you had a half hour once a week. It was a very uh, formulaic approach, and and I needed more than that. My formulaic, I mean, here's your proficiency. You're gonna have me tested at the end of the semester. Methodical. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not how Steve Gadd got to be. You know, how do you really play? I needed a mentor. You know what I mean? I was yeah. wild and untamed from high school and rock, and uh, <laughs> and I. I envisioned going to Berkeley and really finding someone that would iron me out right and and that kind of never happened but no. what what happened was my friends kind of did took that yeah. role and and we would be, you know John Blackwell was there at the time oh, he's a student he, John's a, absolutely and That's Ken Tondre was there Ken Tondre was uh, there but he was uh, like about halfway through he got there oh, he was, uh, Brian Tishy was there really? Gabe Laborio wow nice Johnny Rab. I, there, the, all your graduating class uh, in that well, era, that era. In that era, yeah, yeah. Who else was? Um, um, actually, Jeff Wall. Stacy Jones from American mm -hmm. Hi-Fi was he? I the think or? he may have been there. Yeah. Uh, oh, John Roberts was there. Mm -hmm. When he showed up, he showed up about two years in, and he comes in and just blows everyone's mind. <laughs> It was you like know, right out of high school. Like just funky time. Just his tops. jazz feel. Oh, was, jazz. Was well, it, it would, maybe it would be a little like what we would call the gospel chops today, yeah, yeah, what yeah. they're calling that. But it was so much more um, dignified. Yeah. Than than what gospel chops is kind of becoming, where it's just kind of a, a barrage, a yeah. smear fest. You know, he he was he he was a ballerina. You know what I mean? Wow. I can't even imagine, you know, what he's doing in his free time. Mm -hmm. uh, today, yeah, because he was like a kid, you know. So that was John and uh, God, yeah. Brian Tishy was there. Um, Tishy is probably as far as like as far as like pure adrenaline, yeah, unbridled rock energy. Probably one of the greatest rock drummers on the planet Absolutely. right now. I mean, when and you I see looked it, up to him. You, like, you're, you're like, yeah. whoa, yeah. And then and then he could shred on the bass and yes. the guitar and sing, and he's yeah. that guy. He's a, yeah, he's that guy. You know, yeah. But, uh, it well, still is well, that. Well, that's amazing to yeah, hear. Yeah. You know? So it's all these, and then yeah, you had to come out and do the Bonzo bashes and the Randy Rhodes tributes and well, stuff. I mean, because Tishy wants to call me, he, I'll do it. Just uh, you know, rattle he, his chain and say, "Remember uh, me from the college days?" Yeah, buddy? I'm not gonna do. We that. had a practice room together. We, we kind of did have a practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know I'll. I'm weird about shit like that. You know, if I, if someone wants to call me, I'll do it. You know what I mean? It's like a Larry David thing. It's yeah, it's and it's not that I'm. Uh, <laughs> it, it's here's the thing. It's not that I think I'm better. Right. It's so not that. It's, right. It's just uh, I start to think about other things, and, and it, it falls through the cracks. Yeah. You know, that's kind of this stage I'm in right you now. You know what I do? I make lists, and they. Yeah. I'm so tired of making lists of lists. <laughs> but that's and good. Then, and then I and then I and then I have to cross them off as things get. And then is and then is I'm busy and yeah. then something doesn't get done and then I have to move that thing up towards the top of the list for the next day and it's just a I I, I feel insane. Yeah, it, it, there's it lists. Well, no, but that's. But the, if you don't write it down, how are you gonna remember anything? Because our memory is mine is. Gro I have the memory. Uh, I have the memory of a, of a T Rex. I, I don't know, just alarms, yeah, like yeah. a small brain. I have a terrible memory. I use Lisp. I never use it for anything musical. Um, maybe when I was practicing more, I did yeah. that. But it's funny I, because so this is kind of what I was saying before when we were when we were off. You know, I'm in this phase where new phase. Yeah, it's sort of like a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's like it's not a it's not a crisis at all, but it's a regrouping. <laughs> It's like an existential. So I'm trying to figure out where I am in all of this and life. where I'm going. Well, I was well, going to ask with you, music like, and yeah, and you life. Know, I mean, because after life. after you play a job, like this is like rarefied air for for someone to have a job with a recording artist for 19 years, be their touring drummer, co-write songs with them. Um, uh, uh, you know, you, you're friends with, with Brad. You know, it's like yeah, you're, you're on his jet. You're like, let's go. Yeah. I mean, and then. Uh, 
that's a, it's a great job to keep for 19 years in a, in a business where friendship and loyalty are not really celebrated. No, they're not. So that's incredible. And yeah. so, and I'm in kind of in a, in a similar situation where it's like, what am I not having a midlife crisis? I already had that. Maybe I'll have another one, but uh, I'm going like, to have a big one. Like I'm just, I, I can feel it. I'm like, 48. Yeah. I'm, oh yeah. I'm 48 next month. Right. Yeah. So we're similar age, but the idea is, where what are we gonna do with our next twenty years? I mean, Vegas shook it up a little bit for me. It was like, oh my God, what's happening here? I'll bet. And then we were there was like, oh, everyone is kind of unharmed in this situation. Thank God that these are actually the drums. Right? We're yeah. on stage, sitting out there for a month in the Vegas. Unbelievable. Heat unharmed and then you say to yourself you know what i'm going to do for the next 20 years and i just tell everybody pardon the french so i tell school kids this and i say sorry teachers i say you know what i'm going to do for the next 20 years i'm going to do really cool shit yeah and that means creative things that satisfy my soul and maybe they're not all drumming but they're things that relate to drumming right. and education and entertainment and right. and you, it, it all it feels good it dry, it's crazy right but it feels good well and those Moving, are the things you know, if you, you're naturally um uh, disposed to, you right. know what I mean, and and I'm trying to find those things. You so know, are you gonna like start smoking a pipe and write a book, or no? I I definitely I like to write. Yeah. So I, I might write something, but it, I don't know that it'll be an instructional book. It may be a biography. I have there's a lot of stories in here mm. um, that are interesting. Maybe you know people like to have a glimpse behind the curtain, so yeah. it might be that thing without selling it. There's nothing to sell out. Because I mean, are we we're too young tame. to write a memoir? I mean, I always say to myself, if yeah. you're under fifty. But you could start. You could. Well, it could be. I mean, the editing process is hell. You might as well start now, Oof. and let that be a twenty-year deal. Yeah, we'll get you know those I mean? get those stories down. Lay, lay your bricks. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I'm trying to. So, you know, let's take education for example. Do you still have um, your online? Well, I've I've kind of let that. That's part of this thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I I've got I backed away from that um, because. In order, and as you know, in order to really keep that ball floating in the air, it's a lot of work. Continually and creating new content? It, it continually creating new content. And, and our touring schedule got busy. And that, I mean, this year where I was kind of on the line with it, touring was crazy. And then we did an album. Now, when we do an album, he takes his time. Mm. And I'm on call. It took a year and a half to do the last album. That's amazing. And... That means we record maybe, I mean, we definitely would go in there more than the average uh, band making an album, but the, the off time is sort of, hey, don't go anywhere, you're on call. You know, like or, don't. this week? Yeah, or we'll, we get off the road, hey, uh, everybody, don't take off, we might record. Um, you know, or if we have a three weeks off, <laughs> wow. don't, you know, get, in, and that's okay. Uh, I'm happy to do it because, I mean, it's cool the way we record, man. Yeah. We go into a house and it's kind of just old rock style. You yeah. know, it's not an it's extra 10 to 2 and we're in there all day and we all collaborate, you know, it, it's really cool. I love that. Um, so the year that that started, I really couldn't, I had nothing left, you know, uh, emotionally to, yeah. to, to think about. And then once we were done, I was thinking about other things. And, and that's where I'm at. I'm just, I'm, music is sort of this thing where it, it's working and, and we've been doing it for a long time and yeah. I've saved some money and, and um, I, it's, it's, I love it. And it's just, it's a, we'll put music here in this box. So I, I put the box here and then I go, all right, that's coasting. What else? Right. And and it, that includes just having friends for once. Because I went for a long time where I was really, you know, when I was in the last relationship, all I would do was, was come home from the road, nest with, with, nest, with nest her. Yeah. And then that's when I was doing a lot of the educational stuff. Because yeah. when she was at work or something, I, I had time, I had space. Because I always see you out with Kevin Murphy and Keo Stroud. You guys yeah. are like, you guys are like yeah. Laurel and Hardy and the, the, yeah. the, 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 you know. And that's very important to me, like yeah. to have time for that. Just to, to turn off, you know, promotion and, uh, <laughs> you know, and what I'm doing. Right you here. know what I mean? And, and here's the thing. But you're kind of blessed. You have this natural energy. Like, you you were born with one of, that's one of, I see, is your gifts, is your your limitless energy. Well, I don't have that. You know, I get, I get <laughs> God bless you. It's, you know, but, I mean, when I latch on to something, I can do it and I can wear it into the ground. But, um I get tired, and my my 
I start to slow down and 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 I. But get, you prioritize. You're like in great shape. You always take time I for love yourself. Love fitness. Yes, that's a that's a interest of mine. It's, you always take time yeah. for yourself first. Like, what did I miss out? I missed my workout today. There was a million phone calls that came in. I was like, oh my god, there's a lot of things. Ha oh my god, it's three o'clock. I have to. Nashville traffic is worse than it's ever been. Right, right. Yeah. So so here we are. But you always take time for yourself, which is so smart. Yeah. Well, but that's also one of my passions. Right. So right. it's like it's like uh, you know. Um, whatever facet of media you're working on today yeah. that you're like acting, you know, yeah. you're really into that. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll be successful at it. You know, you, you, it's, you, you, you bouquet in that environment. Well, I love, um, I love the challenge of, of, of staying fit and, and being in my late forties and just seeing how it's not about looking a certain way either. It's more like how good can I feel? Well, it's that, uh, and know. there's something that's really incredibly uh, the perception of a man approaching 50 that is in great shape. This yeah. is rare. Yeah. Let's face it, because I yeah. just was at the beach. Right. And, and I see what people <laughs> yeah, look yeah. like. Right. And, and people half our age that don't take care of themselves. So that's a great thing. And I mean, you could be like, hey, uh, which, you know, it could be like a cool side hustle too, but then it becomes a job when you're like, let's go, we're going to work on your back and bias today. Right. That sounds exhausting. Right. To train people. And I don't and stuff. want, nah, yeah, well, I did start an Instagram page and I'm trying to pour water on it. It's called Aging is a Choice because that's the philosophy. Right. Because it really is a choice. We don't have to be lethargic and have hip problems and be overweight um, into our 50s and 60s. Right. It's a choice and right. it doesn't take much. And I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm not uh, into the cult aspect of it where we're, we're like, eh, I don't mean to come down on, everyone always thinks of CrossFit. I don't know enough about it to, to call that a cult, but the public perception of it is, of that is just, it's, it's this cult and you do it. Oh, I saw go two and girls are walking in Calypso yesterday. Yeah. They're coming out of Calypso. Yeah. These women were beasts. They yeah. had hams and glutes yeah. and quads. And that's and great. It was like, whoa! But you can get it without having to um, have it become a, a religion. Cult. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a natural process uh, that your body will work along where, where you don't have to, you know, get all the sports drinks and just, you know, those are influences um, into your fitness, but they're not the cause of fitness. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, 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 and you do have to have a focus, but I, I want to have a focus and then I want to turn it off and go do something else. Right. I don't want to be thinking so, about it. So, but every it time you have a meal, you're thinking about the food you're putting in your face. Yep. Which allows me to have all kinds of food. You know, right. I just think about how much food I'm putting in my face, okay. not so much what I'm putting. You know, if it's um, ice cream, right, we all know that's uh, calorically dense. Well, I just have ice cream once in a while. I don't eat buckets of it every week. <laughs> You know, right. to and, satisfy your but when my body goes, you know what? Tonight I want ice cream. I have it. Amazing. So I don't, I don't uh, starve myself, but I don't overindulge. So I've got this kind of this balance, and that's really uh, a lot of people don't have that. That's it. That's a great bone. You know, it's and, a great, great trait. And I'm five. You know, if I wanted to, and I'm pretty lean. I have low body fat, but if I wanted to, I always stay around five pounds away from completely ripped so if i really for some reason if i'm going to the beach for a week and i want to go there i'm five pounds away i love that so that would take what yeah. uh, a week if i you know yeah um just not drinking so i just maintain about five pounds above like stupidly lean nice you know it's probably good for the road too you should probably write some uh pieces for um there you go, modern drummer. Men's fitness. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Or um, you know, actually, a, a drummer's perspective for a big trade magazine. Men's fitness would be great. Absolutely. Be, uh, you, uh, see, you're always thinking about that. You do have a platform. Great. You know, as I, as I vape, you know. <laughs> no, it's but like it's not. 19 years yeah. with, with a, one of the biggest recording artists in the world. It's a cool way to break the ice with the editor at Men's Fitness magazine. Men, you know, Men's Health or Men's Fitness. You know, that's a. Do you know? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna Put pay attention to you. Do you, do, you, do you know who that Their is? Their email addresses are probably friends, obviously. in the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know everybody. for, for those of people that, that are not paying attention yeah. or want to know, Jim McCarthy, my right-hand man, friend for at least a decade, is behind the camera here. Uh, Jim McCarthy Voice... Is it Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers.com? Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers.com. So if you're looking for the perfect voice for your next... Podcast, uh, local commercial. commercial. Why stop there? Disney movie. That's yeah, right. Pixar. Come on, just takes now. a phone call. I know. Just ask. My friend, Little Mermaid two. My friend's working on a cool cartoon, 
and I think I might have to audition, but I think I might be the voice of the snare drum, like <laughs> Sandy the snare drum, because they want a snappy, high energy guy. And then the bass right. drum's got the bass drum guy's going to be like, oh, yeah, like what's Brad, going, uh, yeah, what's what's going on? Yeah, everyone loves Raymond. It's going to be yeah, low, right, very right, low. Right. Anyway, so. These are, you know, I don't get paid a lot of money to do voiceovers, but uh, when they do come, I'm... That's very lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just fun to do. Hey, like, do, you, do we have some questions? Because the idea is to occasionally yeah, take Rich's question. brain. So yeah. if so anybody wants to uh, ask Ben some questions. Yeah. Uh, I was curious about that title, Pick Rich's What, I Pick Your Brain? Yeah. I, mean, I, I would love yeah. to pick your brain. Yeah, the idea is, the idea is that uh, people can... You know, we take questions occasionally from the, uh, yeah. the, the interwebs. But as you do your... your, your, your um, Solo videos, that's more of a pick versus play. And really the funny thing is, is that every every text and Facebook message I get from people, drummers around the country is, I'd love to pick your brain, take you out for coffee. Right. Like, damn, I could float away on a river of coffee. The yeah. idea to have guests on is so you could pick his brain. I get a hundred, yeah. <laughs> What, does anybody want to know anything? Well, I already picked his, I asked about his hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I got hair. the guy for you. Because, you know, I, I'm always looking for a new... Yeah, for those Nashvillians that are working, Will Just Simmons. so you know, I'm trying to grow it out, so it, it kind of looks like a helmet right now. So <laughs> I'm trying to get it. But the thing is, is that, you, the, you know, at, at both guys, you guys are getting towards 50, you got great heads of hair. I, mean, you know, I can't say the same for me. Uh, Jim is balding, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but you've got that, you've got that <laughs> no, badass. Not, don't fuck yeah. with me. No, yeah, you're, sorry. you're not really balding. You're just... Uh, you're no, just, I shave it. You just have the peaks. You have the power... But Kevin Murphy calls them power alleys. Yeah, the little yeah, power yeah. alley. Can you hear him saying that? He got all those power alleys, <laughs> and he does his gap tooth. Oh my god! <laughs> so Jim uh, Riley says hi, guys. Jim Riley. Oh, hey, Jim. Uh, and Tori Dent McDonald. He's uh, talking about the book. He says, from the voice of, the voice of experience that has lost all her siblings and both parents, Aww. get the stories and memories down on paper now while they are fresh-ish in your minds. You will thank yourself later. That's great. That's great advice. That's Tori. Tori is. Uh, Tori is a great friend, and she's almost kind of like a street team leader of mine in Connecticut. So whenever oh, wow. I'm in Connecticut, she puts together educational events and stuff, and she's really best pals with my other buddy and great student, Sarah Card Cardiel, um, who just got fourth place in the Hit Like a Girl contest for girl drummers. She did a cool video, and it was like um, she played um, Sing Sing Sing, yeah, and right. then went into Motown, and then she did an Iron Maiden yeah. song. And oh, I saw the video. Song. She's good. It's she's great. great. She's great. She's, she's got groove. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, so, ne so next time we'll maybe do the same kind of a thing but we'll have a chop out a little bit more right they want Jonathan chops. Adair says he's opened for you in 1999 in Fayetteville North Carolina hey Jonathan says Ben was so complimentary oh not me and you <laughs> it, wait in 99 99 man uh, I should have started Tori's right I should have started writing yeah, I yeah. can't remember anything from 1999 so we haven't covered Just, this yet I don't think we did okay it. Jake Presnall for Ben tell us about how you got the gig with Brad Paisley. there you go okay that's an, uh, that's an interesting turn. story. Um, it started with, uh, I was just playing locally with uh, Dylan Altman. Do you know Dylan? Yeah, songwriter. Great songwriter, yeah. blues guy. That's the guy I moved here with. Oh, from From Berkeley, Berkeley. yeah. Gotcha. It was just he and I, and we, we threw all, the old story, we threw all our stuff in a, in a car and drove down to Nashville. And you, had, and you had a buddy. Yes, we I'm, had a buddy. It's great. That's it. We, Jim Riley was my early buddy. Yeah. We, we crashed together in a... In a uh, one bedroom apartment. Yeah, that's yeah. what this was. And then we kind of we got some other buddies. A couple of weeks later, we rented a house out in West Mead, and we were doing that gig. Um, I took a year off to go play with Missing Persons because my buddy was sure. like coming through from Texas. He's like, "Hey, if you want the drummer gig, you know Dale Bozio." I think Nick Buta did that gig too. Did he? Yeah. He never told me that. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Well, and it was crazy. Uh, and I did that for a year, and then I moved back and joined back with Dylan. Another, I don't know, a uh, few years just doing clubs. We used to play this dive on Nolensville Road called Jack's Guitar Bar. Yes, I that know Keith you Urban know. used to play Keith there all the time. Yeah, yeah. and the, we used to do the, gigs with Keith. The Ranch. The Ranch. The Ranch. And they were great, man. I mean, they, yeah. we, you know, he was new in town, and he would come see us play, and then he would ask to double bill. And this place was no bigger than maybe, I yeah. don't know, half this room. It was yep. tiny. Yes. Um, well, it was bigger than that. but Yeah. Um, so out of that, just doing that, one of our local just people that would come see us every week was this woman named Shauna, and uh, and I owe everything to her. If I could trace it back to one person, she just she was just a, a friend who kind of came to see us, would hang out, and she, ninety seven she got a gig at Asylum Records, just kind of at the uh, receptionist uh, station, and she said, hey, you know. Um, 
there's this thing opening up. It's, it's an audition. It wasn't for Brad. It was for another artist. And uh, why don't you come audition? And I was like, sure. You know, I wasn't. It wasn't the kind of thing where people come now. Where, of course, I was hungry, but I was. Ha I was on my way. You know, in terms of being happy. I was with Dylan. We had a great band. I had a girl. I was working. Um, I wa It wasn't like desperate. You know. Yeah. And. So I was just like, yeah, I'll go audition. And I went in there, and there was a line of kids. I love it. They were all nervous. You could see it. On the, there was a line of drummers. There was bass players and drummers. And, uh, and they were all, oh, my God. And I'm just like, I'm already good. So there was nothing to lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I was already happy. Place to be. And, and my only goal walking into that audition was to create a vibe. It wasn't to get the gig. It was just to make a musical vibe happen. Yeah. And we went in there, and it was me and the bass player, and he, that was his idea, too. And we did it, and we got the gig, and it, well, it didn't last long. We did four shows, and as some of the careers do, um, and even in that golden age, because it was, it was a golden age of, of, you could come here and get a gig. And, uh, well, it didn't last, so, um, that was 97. Well, two years later, the manager calls me. Two years later. Two years later. He yeah. goes, Ben, hey, it's Jimmy. He goes, look, look, I got another artist. I, I, his name's Brad. I, I don't know if it'll do anything. <laughs> but why don't you come on down? It's 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 kind of an audition, but there's no one else going to be playing but you. And listen to some of the music and, and just come on in. I'd love to have you. And I said, yeah, again, sure, great. I didn't. I, I wanted to do it, and uh, but I was already happy. I was doing again. The band was doing well. We were excited. Um, I come in, and I learn my stuff for the record from the record. And Brad just comes in. He doesn't want to do anything from the record. He, he wants, wants to jam. jam. He wants to do covers. He wants to take songs and make them 15 minutes long, and all this stuff. And I didn't know all the standards at the time. And and I was very heavy handed. I was very rock. Yeah, and uh, but I listened to him when he played, and I went with him. Right. I flowed with him again, just creating a vibe, and he liked that. Right, and that's why I got the gig. And someone who listens. Yeah, great. And then after that, I refined the dynamics, and I got into his heroes. You know, I started listening to the people he listened to, right. and then all these guys in the band were from a whole other planet musically. And they kind of took me under their wing, and I was willing to to admit to myself that I didn't have it all together. Mm -hmm. And um, I became a fan of that music, and uh, which was just at the time like really like, old school country like music, like Waylon Willie, yeah, and and George, George Jones, Jones, and, Jones yeah, gotcha. and uh, you know, and and Buck Owens, and man, and and remember, it, the great, remember the Great Escape, that little yeah, comic book store. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, two yeah. boots pizza now. Yeah, yeah. I went and I bought. All the cassette stuff, like right. all the greatest hits. Yeah, that's what I. I figured I better learn this stuff, man. Well, I fell in love with it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't more. It wasn't just about keeping the gig, or, or anything. I mean, I, I genuinely fell in love as yeah. a fan, not even as a drummer, and yeah. that's what got me able to sort of have the musical conversation. Yeah, well, the um, drums were never important. Right, they were and transparent. I'm fine with that. They were transparent, which yeah. is more challenging. Absolutely. Than to chop out well i think you have to be a fan of of not only drumming but of music too uh, especially at least for me it, it was the drummer was born out of the fan right you know it wasn't just a love of drums it, it started with a love of music and i can trace it back to four years old you know where who was your I, first guy it was it was um bill haley and the comets rock around the clock <sighs> yes i heard that I mean, here i am i'm a blob i'm four uh, I'm four years old and barely uh, potty trained, and all of a sudden this rock around the clock comes on, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you remember that? Absolutely. But, uh, I remember but, it like, uh, oh, yeah, and it was like, uh, what is this is? Play it again. Yeah. Just play it again. And it got the, they were bribing me with the, eat so my this vegetables. Is, so this is, <laughs> this is 1973? Know, 74. 74, yeah. yeah. And then it was like Bay City Rollers. Remember that? Yes. You know those guys? You know, yeah. Kiss. Kiss. Destroyer. And then my brothers, anything my older brothers uh, brought me was hero worship. So I was this fan, like yeah. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. You know. Um, we had the Columbia Record and Tape Club. Yeah. Delivered the records to you your put, house. You taped the penny to the, um, 
And you're like, well, you taped the penny. All right. And yeah, and they all showed. I still have those records. Yeah. I still have my yeah. Columbia House records. Uh, yeah, me too. Kiss, double you know, platinum. Rock uh, and roll over. You taped the penny to the... To the order form. You tape the penny to it, and you pick what you want. And oh, apparently right. you pay later. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, they, we'll bill uh, you later. Uh, with interest, I might be out a million dollars. Because I don't remember paying anything. <laughs> but, but, uh, but that was it. Like... I was a fan of, of music, and then uh, the drummer kind of was born out of that. So that's a different, I, I don't know, it's hard to, to, to regulate whether that's, if kids are still coming up that way, you right. know what I mean? Or, the, or is, are they a fan of just being noticed? Or is they, there a paradigm shift? <clears throat> are they really a fan of music and then drumming and then success may come from that? Or are, they, or are people just really into success? And why are people watching DJs? <laughs> I mean, what is that all about? Um, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it's like come on, okay. it's an art form. Well, I got this right, you know. and I have, I got these things, and I have a mixer, and I have these two USB spin turntables, uh -huh. and there's two million dollars of the production behind me, and and a line out the door to get in this place. That's a good work if you can get it. I, I got to get a laptop. Oh, here's one. That's so I can do. The <laughs> Well, did, you get, got, did you play along the records when you were? Oh, and I air drummed. Yeah. Because when it got too late to play music, I had I kept going. Yeah. You know, I would I would just and and there was a lot of you know how they talk about the power of visualization and yeah. things like that. Well, I did that naturally. Right. I didn't need anyone to teach me that. I mean, I would picture myself in arenas. I mean, really deeply. That's heavy. Picture, and I would picture myself on TV. Playing on you know Saturday Night Live or something, and, and I, I there was, a, there was a, Live, a, actually we never did that one. We've yeah. done all of them, but that that's a tough yeah. But but still, I mean, more than everything I've ever visualized has come true. So I, you know, I'm very you're, fortunate. You're listening, hey. Um, but I don't know how you teach that. I know they they there's a there is a curriculum about that, but it, it's it was very deep, and I still do it to this day, and. Um, I, I'm I'm very good at, at fantasizing and you know or at least fantasizing and some of it happens and some of it doesn't but a lot of it did and because you know when you're a kid and you don't have computers and phones you know you really just have your imagination you know you have the music which right. is on records and the only media you get are those album covers yeah you absorb all that the credits but those credits yeah. We feasted on it. Yeah. Like, though, like, wow, this was recorded where? Yeah. Wow. It was a big deal. Yeah. And it's a total. It was a totally different time. And, and there, there was a romance. There was a deeper yeah. attraction to the uh, to the artists that you worship. That you know. Whereas now, and I don't say this like grumpy old man, kind of you know. Well, back we when I was a kid, yeah. but it's different. Like it it's is. there's so much of it, all at your fingertips. Yeah, everybody's a recording artist. How do you artist, become? Yeah. Mm. As ingrained with it as as we did, mm -hmm. uh, except unless you're. I mean, there's always going to be, you know, your your fanatics. You remember but, MTV? We'd watch. I, I, I got into the police, and I would be like, amazing. "When when is the police video coming on again? When, yeah. when is every breath you take coming on?" Whap, doo -doo, whap, yeah, they're watching so I can watch his grip, and that's one of the reasons I switched. Play was that along video, to it, you know, just yeah. like, oh my god, the ashtray. Yep, you know. Wow. I, I mean, I kind of rem I feel like I almost remember a blank screen watching a blank screen and, uh, and then MTV coming on. Like, I, I almost remember. The, the day it started? Yeah, it's very close to it. Like, very close. Wow. I, I mean, I'm exaggerating. Martha but. Quinn. I, yeah, Martha I loved Quinn. her. And Nina Blanc. funny. Nina. Did you ever look back on her and still have those feelings? I'm like, you know, not now. She, she, she not. aged pretty well. I've looked at Google images of her. Yeah? She was so cute back then. Yeah, so cute. Oh, my God. She was. You know, and I was. And then there was Nina Black. She was she like a that, babysitter. She had that smoky voice. Well, now, now it's even more. Now she she smokes from a hole in her trach. I think you know. Hey, no. <laughs> she, she, she hey, can hit a lower yeah, register than I did. This can. week on the '80s flashback. Yeah. yeah. And then Mark Goodman died, yeah, well, I believe. I hear she's doing movie trailers. Mark Goodman died, and then John. I'm kidding, by the way. Alan Hunter still does Sirius XM. He has a station on Sirius XM. Yeah. A lot of those people were those old radio people. Yeah. Yeah. But they were they caught the the right time. Oh, yeah. VJs. Yeah. Video VJs. DJs. Yeah. Wow. And everybody was in an uproar. Oh, this is the end. Yeah. You know, this is oh now what are we gonna do? Just and I was it. one of those people. I was I loved it, but I also feared it. 
I was like, this is a big deal. What's going to happen? You know? But I loved it. I sat in front of it. I couldn't wait for it. Like, yeah, yeah the police. Um, I loved Power Station, Tony Thompson. Absolutely. Um, God. Or anything that... Uh, we survived metal. I mean, we survived Judas Priest. Yeah. I like Dio. I loved Vinny I love, I love... Those me too. Yeah. And the concert toms and just the nasty... Yeah. He had a he had a thing, man. They recorded those at, at Sound City. That, that, that you know, that documentary that uh, Dave Grohl did? about yeah. the, That they recorded that last record there and then they tore the building down. Or, yeah. I don't know. It's like a Dollar General now or something. I'm kind of hoping... Um, to get on the rock and roll residency and do Holy Diver, That'd like, be I awesome. really want to. So like, what is that? Is that every there. Tuesday night? I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm not. It's. I think. Yeah. I need to be they, they moved it to the Mercy time. Lounge. Yeah. You haven't go. done it? Come on. I've never done it. No, the rock and roll residency. I've done a million of. We like, should the, get in the on Tom it. Hurst things. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. Loud jams and the tributes. Yeah. Well, well it's yeah. a different crew. It's a different. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'm, that surprises me that you haven't done it. I need to go do that. Let's go get out there. We'll get Murphy. We'll get Keo. He did it. We will tear it up. I think I, he did it once. I can see that. But he's, you know, he's, he's, you know, uh, 80% rock and roll. I mean, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't, know, yeah. don't ask me what the other I don't know. 20% is. I consider myself a rock and roll drummer that learned other things. Oh, it's kind of, um, <laughs> You know? Yeah. A lot, a lot of those things kind of came back around in vogue right yeah. around the right time for you. Yeah. You know, and in the '70s, you grew up with rock and rock drumming, as you did. Yeah. You know, for me, it started in 1984 or '85 with Van Halen. How old are you? I'm 43. Going to be 43. Okay, got it. So I mean, I started like air drumming and everything. Yeah. And I was in 1984, and to 1984. Uh, yes. That album was just Epic. so large. Oh my gosh, it was great. Things just don't get as large. <laughs> As things got well, because you know, it's just there was just a there was only a couple instruments, yeah, taking up more space. Whereas yeah. we have so many things, and again, too many options. Even in recording, there's yeah. too you know when you're limited. I mean, the Beatles were limited. They didn't know it. They were using technology to the to the most cutting edge uh, so level they could, yeah. um, but they were limited. So they had to that force the creativity. You know, I mean, that's kind of how I learned to improvise. You know, it would be to take two things, um, and you don't get to play the whole kit. You get a snare and a hi hat, and sixteenth notes go. Oh, is that you, some of your yeah. Berkeley teachers would well, do? No, that's just something. Uh, a little test for yourself. Do it for us. It just through periphery. It wasn't a Berkeley mandate, but it was. Uh, eh, maybe some of that came from there. I like that. So like when only you're symbols, limited, only times, only right. Yeah, like or only a certain sticking, or only an accent pattern, and one other thing. That's you know? great. When you limit, when you're limited, it's amazing how much shit you can do, as opposed to when okay, you have it all. The humanity comes out more. Yeah. You know, and and it's it's funny because we boys bring this up. I've never been into big drum sets. But I mean, I've got, I've, I've got little. I don't know. It depends. But on not that. not the, not that. Right. Well, I was a huge Neil Peart fan. Were you? Were you? Oh, Let's Russia's. talk about this because. Oh. They, me too. Well, he was too. I don't even know what to say that hasn't been said. But I mean, I mean Movie Picture is probably one of oh, the greatest records of that century. I was right? ten years old. My brother goes, "Hey, Benny, check this out." And and I was just starting to drum. You know, just it was the perfect. Uh, storm of, of me learning to drum and that coming in as an influence and I heard whatever Tom Sawyer and the camera eye and, and YYZ and I and he's like you know he's got all these drums they start like from here and they go and I'm like what <laughs> and again there was little you couldn't find photos you had the album covers and you could kind of see it and it was like or you go to Spencer's and go to see the six foot rush poster and yeah. you could see Oh man, and yeah, you know that chimes kind of, and the I was I was anti Neil at first. I was never I was anti Neil ADH all the way. And my brother got into a band, a cover band. My brother plays keys. Yeah, and uh, the guys in his band, the guitar player and the drummer, the bass player and the drummer, were huge Rush fans. I was like, hey, Alex can kick Neil's ass. Eh. And everyone's like, they're like, yeah, have you seen Neil play? I'm like, no, I don't need to. <laughs> that was that was a, that was thirteen. That you know? was a no brainer for me. Yeah, you know, uh, well, my playing went. So talented. But I was also in a huge Zeppelin phase, too. So luckily I had, that was a complete contrast. So I had a, a best of kind of both worlds, yeah. you know. Um, a lot with a little, you know, uh, bottom. And then more is more. 
yes. on that on the other yeah. side. But with his his articulation was just so, just to me, just so badass. It yeah. wasn't so much what he played, but how he played. The biggest know? the biggest drums set I ever got mm. was adding the three roto toms that everybody bought for a ninety nine dollars totally. at, at Zampino's drum shop or, or oh, absolutely. You know, dude, I saved up for a year to buy the You know, it just like and it's just you work. But I back then you had more drum to drum accuracy. Yeah, like the way I approach things now are just like Scott don't do it. It's like you only have to do this. Yeah, right. Right. So, but back then it was speed and drum to drum, and you were you were awesome if you didn't hit a lot of rims. Right. Right, right. You know, and now I'm horrible at that, you know. I'm having to figure it out because, you know, I, I would have a similar one up, two down setup, but yeah. Brad likes toms. Yeah. You know, he has the kit in the studio is 8, 10, 12, uh, three across, two down. Oh, it's real nice. He likes, he's, Recording and, and, and he'll stop in the middle of a song and go, hey, next time, just play them toms. Hit those toms anywhere you want in the song. I, um, I love that. He, yeah. Play them toms, Play man. them toms. But I mean, not but, uh, do, 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 that not yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever. He he doesn't care. He goes, go crazy. You know. I love that's that. pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. He'll, he's, don't hold back. Go here, right here. I want you to go crazy. And then here, I want you to just give me, he calls it, it's what he calls an Alex Van Halen fill. So I have to translate his I mean, language. Gubba, gubba, gubba. No, no. He he's, he when he says play an Alex Van Halen fill, it's a run. It's mm. go, 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 go. that in his mind. I right, think right. that's. Go, what, go, do, 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 yeah. I remember when I did a recording session like in '97 when I moved here, and the producer said, "No, gaga, do, 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 do. Only blaku, bluku, blaka, blah, blah. All the right. Blaku, bluku. That's pretty understandable. Because that was after Nirvana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like right, right. He was like, no, no, gaga, do, 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 no. Yeah. And then the verbalization I, is what cracks me. <laughs> and then I moved. Uh, well, I, at I least you that got that. Tom, you know, because yeah, when I moved yeah. here in the '90s, we all I had the the um, the Yamaha uh, the Maple Custom with the little gold lugs that yeah, Wackles, yeah. every kid had uh -huh. in college, and and so it was like gaga do 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 do, you know. And I was like, okay. And then I was playing country, so I didn't need as much stuff. So I got rid of that middle tom, and then I dropped my ride, which used to be up here, all fusiony right. down here. And then it was just like, well, instead of putting the 10 inch here, let's put the 12 inch there. And then I just became that guy yeah you know well and that's the perfect setup if i had my way it would just be one up and two down ride real low of course angled away yeah but uh yeah so what's know. the philosophy on your symbols well just Sign because is. it's just i keep them low so the so lower they the go what's that so you see the so chicks. they can see me that's all oh, gotcha, gotcha. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's Brusco. less of me than them yes so, uh but well yeah i don't like them and also, well, I say that, but, you know, I don't like them to be right in my field of vision because I can't see what's going on on the stage. Either. Yes. So, but and I just, I do like them down here. So, you know, height and angle are relative. So the lower they go, the more I have to angle them so I don't have to kink my, if they were tilted towards me, I'd have to scoop. Right. You Which know is I mean? always the jazz this, number. That this thing. keeps my wrist straight. Because I'm on top of it, you know, it looks it looks bizarre. But I don't break symbols or anything yeah. you know, because of it. Well, people always ask me, yeah, do you break symbols? And I was like, no, you got it's glancing blow, man. It's molar. Yeah, you don't play it's, through it's it. Timpani. Yeah, it's timpani. Yeah, you slowed it down. It would just look like a U. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Something like that. Glancing. Blow. Don't break. Don't break. Uh, break a lot of them. Um, well, that's great. So you had. So it comes down to relationships. You have this. That's how you got the gig yeah. with Brad, and you've cultivated this whole thing forever. And then what are your your companies? Or your, you got like. Yeah, Ludwig and Sabian. Sabian. Which is a new. That's new. Oh, I think you're with the Mile. No, no, no. I switched last year. About really? A year ago. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. The Sabians. I, yeah, and I'm yeah. dude. I can't. <laughs> And this isn't a shameless plug. Like I love, I think they are the best. I yeah. think, uh, and they really throw themselves into the experiment. You know, we went up to the. Fa have you done the? Factory I just went tour? up like two weeks ago, and yeah. I made a new ride symbol. It's in my. It's in my car. Did you? Was it just you? Or did you go with a group? It was me and Mark Love. Yeah. And then I went and I and I did an Instagram takeover for the day. So they wanted me to. I said, you know what? Let's make everybody here that's been coming and making symbols for the last yeah. thirty years rock stars. So I got. Yeah. On film, every yeah. day, them making the symbols. What's your name? How long you been here? Like, show me a little bit your work. And it's like it was so cool because See, people were like, cool. "That's these are living, breathing, organic things that are made from the earth." And these, but these guys, they show yeah. up every day and they do it. They have fifteen minutes for lunch. Yeah, they have fifteen minutes for lunch. Yeah, and they clock in. They get a full eight-hour day if they take their fifteen minutes for lunch, and they just crank out symbols yeah. all day long. And it's unbelievable. And yeah. they love, the, you know, this must be something uh, to the uh, testament of Andy. Um, everyone I talk to there really seems happy to be there right. too. 
You know what I mean? It's a good job. It's yeah. the spirits are high. It's a hard job. Oh yeah. I tried. Oh, did you try hammering? I tried. I was an idiot. I was like, I'm right. like, oh, I'm a three years old. I mean, I, mean, I mean, the guy was telling me, okay, now spin it and here. Yeah. I was like, no. What? So I, no. Do you hear the differences as they do it? Well, what are they listening for? It's well, no, it's not listening. It's just you're just trying to nail it. They, there's a rock or something. There's a metal thing, thing <laughs> under the symbol. So all you have to do, the goal is to just hit the hammer on the symbol under the rock. Right. So, but you can't, but you have to move it while you're doing it, and you're just getting air balls the whole time. It's just going clink. You're just destroying the... This beautiful piece yeah. of, yeah, the potential And they're just going like this all day long and just hitting it every time. And, and, it, and yeah. it's like, there's a knack where you let the weight of the hammer, you're not, they're not really working very hard, but it's, it's... I have a whole new respect for those guys. Yeah, you know? and, and then I was like, Mark, now how about we do, we take the, the Bash ride, the Legacy ride, the Evolution ride, and this uh, uh, other, uh, the Groove ride. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I want a perfect bell. I yeah. want an articulate jazz, big yeah. band friendly articulation, but I still want to shoulder crash it, and I still want to be able to crash it, like the, I said, like the Warp Tour. I want to be on just all on it. Yeah. The perfect symbol that a, that a, that a rock guy, a Latin guy, a big band guy, or a, or a Nirvana, type basher would like because that's really what we need in Nashville he said I think we could do it we're gonna we'll take this from this we'll we'll lave this first on it well, then we'll hand hammer it and we did three of them and then we compared them I was like I like that one that's exactly what I what I wanted I wanted it's, it's hard exact to find because you this. want three things in a ride symbol mm -hmm. you want a killer bell a la abacab yeah you know mm -hmm. and you want a, ki a killer ride glassy big band you know For uh, yeah. nice and articulate and then you want to crash and that's a lot tall order that's for one tall symbol order. what we did was we took an artisan symphonic Oh my ride and yes. made an omni out of it wow so the ride was killed the bell was killer the ride was killer and then we did no crash we we shaved around the edges and made an omni out of it and that thing is it's, so, so that's your thing it's the same it's it's different but it's the same it's the different yeah, yeah. but that's something we have the same yeah request that guy mark mark Love. Yeah, he's mark. been there like 30 something years yeah you know michael vosbein yeah, yeah, from uh, Istanbul. Uh, he was with Istanbul. He was with Bosphorus. Bosphorus, yeah. Uh, I, I got a little video on him, and he, he, he described the process for himself of how to pick a symbol. When you have the ability to pick one. Right. He says, you know, when you hit a symbol, you just feel it. It picks you. That's right. It you know, picks you. Wow. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah. that is deep. Man. That's heavy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, a, it's an amazing craft. And I, 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 was, I went up there about a decade ago when I was a new, you know, Sabian endorser. And I signed with them, I believe, in 2003. And, you know, you, you go through the different lines and sizes. You find your jam. And so for me, is I like 20, 20, mm -hmm. 22 to 24, 15 or 16. And then that Holy China is such a perfect yeah. China. White hot energy. It's out of the way. Yeah. Um, so I, you settle on what you really, really like. And then maybe there's some differences for the studio. But it had been a decade, so it was time to go up there and you, know, you cross over and into Canada. And they're like, Where, "Did you play the concert last night in Maine?" You know, because we I always try to time it when we play Maine. Absolutely. And so they're like, "Yeah, I was there." She's like, "Oh, we were there. We loved it." Like, go ahead, yeah, come yeah. into our country. Yeah. We had a good time. Yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> Did you stop at the Timmy Hose? Any other questions? We got some interesting stuff. Timmy yeah, let's Hose. take some I'm questions. Really enjoying the conversation. So awesome to hear you two chat about this. Stuff. Oh, we're just chatting chattersons. Um, yeah. Uh, John Wilson said, getting back to uh, just two men approaching fifty. The new guys coming in and then the kids. The new fifty. Yeah. There are young drummers, students of mine, who are finding, absorbing, and creating new music. It's great to see their passion when they get it, or maybe it gets them. Mm. LOL. Um, all about relationships, building relationships. Uh, Kylie, Kyle, not Kylie, Kyle Snyder. Ben, what is your favorite Brad record? Any songs that y'all play or don't play that you particularly enjoy? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I don't uh, prioritize them it, it, in that way. They, they're all a joy to play. Um, I know that sounds uh, political and safe, but it's it's true. Now, I mean, as far as records. The Fifth Gear album was a fun, uh, that was, gosh, that was back in, I think, 2007. And halfway through that album, that's when I switched to traditional grip. And we were really kind of throwing some experimental stuff. We were doing, uh, we brought Roto Toms in for a oh, session. Wow. Uh, Ticks and a song called um, big All I Want Is A Car. 
uh, which is a great album cut on that record, were Rototoms, um, and I had a Gretsch kit in there, and we got rid of that, and then I had bought this beautiful 60s Ludwig kit, yeah. and we took about four months off and came back and finished the record, and I was playing traditional, because I shedded for four months, that's wow. all I did. Um, and then I brought that kit in, and it had a whole other um, vibe. So we, we we experimented a lot. Yeah. In within that was still within the Nashville framework of ten to twos. You know, we were out at the castle. Yeah. Everybody was home by five thirty. You know. Yeah. Um, the dead bodies in the lawn there. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, so the fifth gear would be the album, kind of my like that pinnacle. Um, album you know a wheelhouse was cool too that was a whole other that was the first album where we took it into his house into his farmhouse and camped and we kind of didn't we didn't have a producer on that it was kind of him and we all just it was a weird time you guys find that you need a producer to walk you get you off the ledge i think it helps to have a producer i think no matter what to have someone objective to yes. have someone outside because because Brad he knows what he wants you know what I mean and he he's he's really good he, if if anyone can produce his own stuff it's him um, but I think that there was a lot of pressure there um, for him it was his first time kind of doing that and, and and it was a lot of you know I think subconsciously uh, my is this gonna work is this you know he was all at the he was at the helm um, and and we were all collaborating we were all camped out it wasn't just uh, we weren't just session guys, you know what I mean? Um, and it's almost like the Metallica process from that documentary. Yeah, made. We, you could have done a documentary on this. I mean, yeah. we, and we were really mixing it up with sounds. I was making my own loops, so he was starting to get into loops. Yeah. And he didn't want to program loops. He wanted me to play four bars, and then he would take it and lo-fi it and make it crusty. And cool. He, he was... Like way it. into playing he, he learned how to mix he learned about plugins and pro and give him a bunch of stuff to toys and that's it he would stay up till four or five in the morning playing with our tracks and doing stuff like really working hard wow. like, just, when, well, I mean I, was it like that with him having that kind of autonomy like was it like that in the beginning no it, it was it was more of a collaboration between him and and, and Frank Rogers who was producing and, yeah. you know it, we, we were making the music was more uh, Remember, the environment was different. You know, um, we were still just cutting kind of organic, homegrown songs. You know, that were that were uh, that sounded nice, but it was more just about it sounding nice and a good lyric and a good melody mm -hmm. and some guitar solos. By the time we were doing Wheelhouse in 2011, it was like, okay, let's get weird. <laughs> Let's get without losing weird, the fans, right? Without losing the how, and that was that was the goal. How can how far can we push this without losing them? Mm -hmm. And and we did. I mean, you know, we might have lost a few, but we gained some too. So oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It was, now, well, now why the traditional? You just said like, oh, because you were. Yeah, that's, I mean, two thousand seven. You're like um, thirty six years old. Yeah, I, man. Here's the story on that, and I'll, I'll try to make it brief. I've always felt. Like you were the I have sticks in my hand when I tell the story. Yeah. It's more comfortable. Um, Those are all cracky. When uh, perfect, <laughs> Dude, you're killing it. Um, when I would, you know, I grew up playing match because I looked at the posters, and, and that's how everybody was playing. So I didn't know the traditional even existed. You know, I saw Buddy Rich play maybe for the first time, and that was maybe the beginning of my awareness. You know, I started playing when I was nine, so. I wasn't into the police yet, and I just didn't see much of it. So I just had enough years like this. Now in high school, in marching band, we still played matched, but every now and then they would try to get us. And when I would just hold the stick like that, I felt a, something transform in my body. I know yeah. it sounds yeah. esoteric and weird, but any, even though I couldn't play, just holding the stick like that felt right. Yeah. Inside, and I never paid attention to it. Kept playing matched, and as I got older, that kind of voice just it kept nagging me. And any time I would do, it's just like, yeah, this is, this is right. And, and in addition to that, matched always felt tight to me. Like matched felt like I, my arms were wrapped in duct tape and I couldn't move. Right, right. Um, and also the timing was almost so 
linear or the stroke was so linear that my timing beats were hitting before I wanted them to. It was just such a perfect yeah. I had to hold myself back to lay back, yes. whereas with traditional grip, there's more movement, there's more of an arc, so it lands more purposefully with the way I hear it. Now, could people tell a difference um, when you switched, or was there, did it change your feel? It definitely changed my feel. Um, I don't remember if but anyone was never like, what's going on? No, no, no. This no. Just like, no this, right. This red, this was... He could have. I mean, the first few shows where I tried it, you know, it took four months of, yeah. of not playing any music. We were off the road. We weren't doing anything. So um, I was like, this is the time to actually do this. And uh, I stayed in the room for three or four hours a day. And I just relearned how to hit and built up strength and then played the music and then re... And then I would kind of go back and forth and see where the stick was going to hit. And you don't, you didn't, go, you don't get a, go, you didn't, a guru? I didn't or, get a guru, no. Yeah. I, at the time, the online thing was just kind of starting at like YouTube, but there were, there were, you were just starting to see some people. I, I got, that's when I learned about the molar. There was this guy, what was his name? He was, he's a Pittsburgh. I hate that I can't give him credit right now. Um, I'll look it up and get back to you, but, um, he was do, filming himself, and he had the molar going on. Yes. And of course, the Joe, uh, not the Joe, or Joe Morello, um, Jim Chapin. Yeah. Uh, uh, even though I, I couldn't really ever figure out what he was talking about, I think you had to be with him to. Yeah. to the, the video wasn't help. It was just like you know, you just do this. You know, it's just, you just do that. It just. <laughs> what? Slow down, I, bro. I can't process it like that. So. Um, this guy from Pittsburgh was really like, no, no, this is what it is, you know, and, and that. And, yeah. Um, I never did an intense study of it, but I always thought to myself, oh, this is natural. The way I play, like the way I'll play. We're all kind of doing it. Whap. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, don't leave the stick on the head. There's an up preparation before the stroke. Yeah. And it's going to keep you from hurting yourself. And it also leads to the tone of your instrument yeah. sounding better as opposed to just whap. Yeah. Just. And if you push it even further, you can get some speed out of it too, yeah. depending on how deep. Oh yeah, the, that stuff. You know that, and um, so anyway. But then you have you throw this in the in the in the mix. Uh, Buddy Rich didn't really play Mueller. He wasn't. He, if you look at his playing, he he wasn't all. He he was a wrist play. He was making a lot all, of wrists. You're making right. all of his strokes just just like that. You know, and I was like, well, that's a different thing. So I worked on that too. Um, so you're just back to the stick control book and syncopation and then your rudiment really books. Stick your... control. I mean, I just kind of, I did my own, my own. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's weird. Uh, I, I, uh, a lot of just switching from um, singles to doubles and paradiddles and things like that, and, and really just trying to get a strong backbeat so that no one would notice. Yes. That was my goal when I switched. I was like, okay, I can't. I don't want to be any less powerful than I am with match. Right. So that was the, that was the, and, and then it, what, well, the hardest part was just the grip was just like literally holding on to it um, without being tired. It took about a year yeah. to fully. That's brave, brave man. Anyway, it, it came, it came uh, from the, a need. It wasn't me trying to do something cool or. or I, I feel or, like an old dog. Like that would be really, really bold and really, really brave. Cause I would be thinking more about the, I would be thinking more about the technique than the music, and that scares me. It'd be like, look, I know how to do this. I'm gonna ride this to the grave. That was very... But that's bold. why you gotta practice to music. That's why I took time and threw on songs. Yeah. Um, so that I wasn't just all techniquing out. Yeah. The, the music brought it to another level emotionally. Even though I was in my room and I was listening to a CD, it still put me in somewhat of a state. Yeah. Now then you go to in-ears, and now you're in front of people. That's a whole other level of... Yes. That's when those first few gigs were a struggle. I feel like I got to give Brad his money back, like for some of the, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> I feel I, like um, uh, I feel like just as an educator, what I'm seeing out there is way less kids are playing. Starting with that grip, they're so everyone is playing matched. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, who knew? I mean, it was all it all came from colonial times. Exactly. Yep. The you know, Civil War. The no, I'm sorry. The Revolutionary War. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they wore the drum on their hip, and then they couldn't hit play it like this. They had to play it like. Well, this. And the drummers were communicating. They weren't just drumming in the middle of a battle. They were no. sending messages to yeah, the other like, Stop. battalions. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. You know, 
It was, I mean, they were, were texting. It's amazing you know. how, how that it, be, it equated to feel. They were texting. You know, yeah. Just to have a better feel on the snare drum. And it was when, when Neil switched and tried to do it with the, with the Gruber thing. Yeah. Right. That was painful for me to watch. It was painful. Did he, did he go? He, he went had back. the whole snare he drum. He went back. He went back. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got the snare drum still up by his navel. That's the whole other he, thing. He's just, it's really high. Yeah, I'm trying to bring mine up, too. There, I know it's a comfortable place, but the problem is, it's like... Um, I get to. I just want to cut it sometimes, yeah. and I get those air balls. And but I know that if it were up here, it would be. I'd look like Superman, you know, he, who's just really has a beautiful hand. Right. You know, he is. It's right there. Um, it's right there, and I'm just. Uh, that's my next. The level of this is to to tr try to bring the snare up so that I'm not digging. Yeah, mine's kind of low rider. I can't. Get, I can't even hit that snare. Is it a reason to do it? Yeah, because I can feel. I can feel that I'm going past. The sweet spot. You know, you think about a guy like hitting a ball out of a park, trying to hit a home run. There's that sweet spot you where know. if you hit it too far back, you didn't wind up enough, and then if you hit it too far forward, you went to use too much yeah. of your. And there's that spot right in the middle where it's you connect the it, and it's base. gone. It's so gone. that's what you're trying to hit is that sweet spot. Yeah. You know, where every time it's it's easy, and it just I'm I'm just cutting it a little too much right. right now but it's way higher than oh dude it's I, I can't even so low and you yeah. got the whole snare. but you but you have a whole different you know you're doing your thing yeah it's perfect i started doing the the snare angled away from me thing so yeah like, you know even though this, the match grip your stick is on a downward angle when mm -hmm. it's contact anyway so mm -hmm. yeah. mine is always like dude what's going on here kid i'm yeah. like dude i stole it from you hit uh, your leg phil collins tony thompson yeah you know liberty it. devito kenny we all i just i yeah. We all did that. It you was, do something I used to do. I used to hit. I used to hit my. Leg. Oh, I hit my. No hair grows right. Yeah, here. It just doesn't grow. And you, and you don't hit the center of the head. You hit like the like the lower I, south part. I guess we do. Yeah, I'm a yeah. little. I'm a little off center there. Like, yeah. but before one one tour, maybe like two years ago, me and John Hole, my drum tech, we. I said I want to revamp everything this year. Mm -hmm. we pull it up. You know, you go through that, and then I, and then I'm like, oh, this is horrible. I, I yeah, can't, yeah. It, no, back to the back to the old dog. Hold on. You guys, the only way it works is you spend time with it. It's working. It's yeah, wor yeah, everything's yeah. working? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Freak me out. See you later. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a question. Yeah. How does it feel? And I thought about this as you guys are talking. <clears throat> At one point in time, you come, you come to town, you aspire to be the guys that are, you know, uh, back then, I guess, uh, you know. Who been Eddie Bears? Eddie and, Bears you know, and all sure. guys. How does it feel now to be the guys that others aspire to be? Do others aspire to be us? Us. <laughs> I think you're making me do. nervous. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it's a lot they, of pressure. They see That's... you, you're on, you know, you got the big gigs and everything, and there are people that aspire to be in your seat. I mean, it's... Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, that's a... I feel uh, gratitude past, yeah. for it. I feel that's the biggest, it's just gratitude. Yeah. yeah. Like, grateful. Is there ever a time where you're like, I can't believe I'm here? Yes. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. It's, it's a little weird sometimes when you're like, well, this person just cooked a meal for me, and yeah, and then I I'm on this like I'm on this, I'm on this private jet. And yeah, they're like little remind, little pinch me's. Yeah, you know, kind of like like I'll yeah I'll step on the plane and then and I might be texting and I'll, I'll put it down and I'll, I'll sit there and I'll go, <laughs> wow, unbelievable. I and then back to the. You know, I, I always have to go through security. You know, yeah. <laughs> I always kind of give thanks in, in my own way, you know. Um, and then I try not to think about it too much because uh, it's weird because this time we're in, I don't want to define myself on it. I don't want to be base myself worth on all of this because I've seen. But people, this defines us, doesn't it? Kind of it's like a big part of like a big. It's part definitely of a life. wedge. I mean, the drumming itself. The drumming. Always the drum. The drumming is definitely a wedge of your person. So if, if if you're this whole person, and part of you is, you know, you're somebody's son, you're somebody's friend, you're an educator, you're a drummer, mm -hmm. right? It's it's just it's a wedge of your whole being. But if you def if you make this particular wedge all you are. Like and people have done that. I've seen it where they define everything by just what they do. Well, hell, this is going to go away one day, mm -hmm. and that's okay. What well, are you going to be when it goes away? We spend right? so much time though in it. Yeah, like you know what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, we live loud lives, 
So I find and like really like busy. Yeah, like, and that's it's what like, I mean by loud. Like, even it's, though, yeah, you try to you it's not try just to drumming. Like, it's all of it. It's it's chatter. It's you know. It's it's just or being in the bus and other people are chattering or you know. It's fast. It's always going. It's like yeah. what, where, where were you last night? Like I. Don't That's know. A, ask me something easy like calculus, you know. Yeah. Where was I last night? Yeah. What are you crazy? I have to check the uh, artist growth app. That's here. funny. Yeah. I thought I was. I, see, I figured you'd be a pro at answering well, no, where I you thought, were last night. I'll, I'll look it up. I, I know. I know where I'm going. You know what I mean? I can tell you my schedule for the next nine weeks. The date I can burn, it's burned into my retina. Where I'm, who I'm working with, how I'm getting there, what the travel scenarios are. Where was I last night? Yeah. I don't know. Shit. I, mean, I left it all on the stage. Though, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a tough one. Well. It's a great, it's a great thing though. Nashville, Tennessee. There's an awesome community here, and this to see these changes. We're just talking about, you know, off camera. We're talking about uh, Fork Strum Closet. We're talking about, yeah. you know, 36 years of a family-owned business that literally started as a closet at Corner Music. Yeah. And then you know we saw all the changes down there on you know 12th Avenue South. It's like a uh, families walking and hipsters and just busy down there. All the businesses just. Well, the believers. Yeah. The believers taking the photo with the believing. The I hope they know what that's for. <laughs> yes, it was then, honoring the flood. Yeah, you know. Right, right. Um, but and now, I mean, it's it's a bittersweet thing because I, I can't. And the wings, the big angel to, wings. Yeah, the wing. I, it's hard for me to speak to it because I'm benefiting from it. Everyone is coming here. Yeah. I mean, we kind of came here when it was like hot dog stands and souvenir shops and like hay bales and horses being tied up and sheriffs and, and like no demumbrian street and it was just like it was it was strange yeah. it was like where who has the gigs because it was a typical, yeah yeah and it's it's sort of become a you couldn't break in i felt like i couldn't break in for years like i was just playing with all sorts of upstarts and and answering ads and for basement auditions right. and like it took me quite some time to well it's kind of funny you mentioned that you've never mentioned that before what's that that you feel like you couldn't break in that's interesting you say that well it took a couple years to to get a good gig. I mean, I met yeah. a young Jason Aldean, moved here in February of 1997, and met a young Jason Aldean in 1999, and in between, there was a lot of showcases and free demos and oh, so you were doing stuff with him back when? 99, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And then he got a record deal in 2004, Right. and then uh, it's been nonstop ever since. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like... You were breaking in the whole time. I was breaking in the whole time, slowly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the Pam Tillis gig was too, like 99, 2000. Yeah. And that was like my first Gibraltar drum rack and somebody would set my drums up for me and here's your water, Mr. Redman. And it was, oh, I, we didn't have that. Cool. I set up, yeah, we were real, in 99 we were baby. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh no! I showed up uh, uh, between shifts at Valentino's. I did the morning shift. Wait I a minute, wait a minute! You waited tables at Valentino's? Oh yeah, that day that I saw you at the CF, at the fanfare. Wow! That's yep, funny. I came in and my beat up just at the end of its rope Toyota Tercel in my penguin suit, changed into playing fanfare because it was called fanfare. Fanfare, CMA so. Music Fest. Yeah. Um, being very curious, watching Pam's set, noticing you, yeah. and you were, you know, I was like, this guy's got a lot of pep in his step. <laughs> you know, you were, st you know, for anyone that wants to know, he was still rich in 99. You know what I mean? It was just all, you know, you, you were a flamboyant, you know, yeah, yeah. energetic guy. And I was like, all right, that's cool, that's cool. Um, and then we played and we did our thing when he did the uh, He Didn't Have To Be song. And this, was, this might be my first time playing in front of 20,000 people. And I was just pouring water for people. And I was blown away. People were crying because it was like an emotional song. That's a great song. And, yeah. and I was like, whoa. You know, and it was over. Put my penguin suit back on. Drove back to Valentino's for so the night shift. Had to do the pouring water. The and, what, oh, so you weren't a waiter. You were like a. I was a waiter. You were a waiter. Yeah, yeah, and I was in between. Sh I, I needled and threaded fanfare between my shifts. That's and incredible. The, the juxtaposition of playing for the first time in front of twenty thousand people and having this emotional um, reaction, and then putting my suit back on, and two right. hours later, I'm serving. I think pasta. That's, a, that's definitely a story for the book. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, well, it's a great story. Great story, and I'm and I'm just giving you the cliff notes. Got to go to Valentino's. Know? I've only been once. But it's I mean, still was, there too. What, 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 was the, what was the emotional impact? I mean, for you, going, you know, just going. Uh, now it's back to reality. Uh, yeah, it was deflating. It was, uh, you know, I was. I, the rest of that day, I was bummed out. 
Mm. It was weird. It was like, how this doesn't seem just, you know. But I, at the same time, I was also, you know, I believed in Brad. You know, he had a thing. You know, uh, he he had a way. He had an intent behind what he did, and, mm. and he was, you know, I remember having early conversations with him. We'd be hanging out. And, I'm like, man, I, I believe in you. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna do great things. And he's very humble. Well, thanks. I don't know. Oh, I don't shucks. know. Yeah. But I but I I wasn't blowing smoke up his ass. He had a thing. I, I'm you know? attracted to the idea that he's really into personal development and continuing education. I mean the fact that he taught himself how to mix and knows Pro Tools and, and knows oh, he's how a, to produce he's a and, wizard. and then he's like does his People own. People don't know that about him. And, yes. like, but I mean he, sometimes he, I just feel like I just do one thing. Like I I will hit those drums. I will mess those that's drums all right. up. You know what I mean? But to, to have somebody that's like that can that lifelong curiosity. Yep. It's a very cool thing. Well, it's driven by a need too, because the the need is I want it done how I do it. Right. And if, I'll do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's he and he, he you know, he's very uh particular about stuff. Yeah. And he knows how he wants it to sound. So and I'm assuming after nineteen years and the friendship that you guys have and the professional um uh relationship that you have, mm. that uh, like doing something like this, doing an interview, it's not a big deal, right? No, not okay. Because yeah, sometimes people will be like, you know, absurd, certain big entertainers in town be like, oh no, my side guys would never, they can't do that. Oh no, no, he doesn't care. That happens. Well, he trusts. I mean, we're friends. He trusts. Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna throw him under the bus, and I don't have anything to throw him under. Yeah, the yeah. Bus. He's only been like my great friend. He's been yeah. great to us. Um, you know, um, on the human side, I mean, we're, you know, there there have been times where we haven't. Uh, agreed on things um, and that's even more of a testament to him because as a friend I can challenge him and I, I, I don't have to fear losing my job or anything like that that's and I can talk straight to him and he can talk straight to me yeah we've uh, that speaks volumes you that's know? huge yeah I mean basically he's a business owner who created a great culture for you guys I mean yeah I recall seeing you uh, the pre-tour dodgeball fights I guess. yeah exactly <laughs> and that that was a funny story because we got a call that night we were bussing out and the, the call was uh, hey everyone come to the come to the farm we call it the farm and come to, come to the farm at midnight. He wants to see you all, and we're all get we're all texting. What pink slips? You know, uh, you know. Midnight. Yeah, yeah midnight. Where he wants to see you all. And okay, we go. He's like, he comes in with a smirk. Hey, everybody, follow me. We go outside, and he had built this garage, and on top is this unbelievable studio thing for the kids, um, like a like yeah, a court. We can be it could be a basketball court, it could be uh, I don't know, anything. Well, they had dodgeball, and they had all the dodgeballs lined up. We played with the kids, his dad, the whole band, and we were it was a, a mess. It's great. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just gotta play, man. We just play, and we yeah, we it was cool. They, they had this. Uh, venting quality to it like you could just smear each other like yeah. just, I, just that time you pissed me off in 2005 <laughs> dodgeball. Just, bam dodgeball that's great it's just just going crazy i love yeah. it oh my god yeah mm -hmm. i was thinking of like those you know those uh, kind of interesting humbling times we were talking about the ranch coming playing mm -hmm. and jo the the guitar bar jack's there. guitar yeah bar. and i yeah. was waiting tables at a restaurant called pargo's on west end pargo's next to the bookstore absolutely it's a Walgreens now it's and i waited on jerry flowers and i was thinking to myself that's the guy why i see mm -hmm. all the time at jack's guitar bar and you know keith urban's you know bass player um you might have seen us there. Couldn't get arrested, man. I yeah. I just felt like I felt like I was playing all the time, but I was working all these day jobs, parking cars, waiting tables, substitute teaching. I was like, when is someone going to see my talent? Well, I mean, do you let me ask you this: uh, juxtap tough. juxtapose uh, then and now, do you still see that same kind of hustle out of the youth coming into town? Ooh, great question, because I don't. I don't really. You know, I don't would, know what they're doing. Would I, somebody, you know, obviously there there it was kind of deflating to go back to pouring water, but at the same time, there had to be something in you going, I want to do that. Again. I don't see them working day do jobs. That more often. They, either they're really smart, they move here with like a lot of money, because like, uh, they uh, money saved, and they just like write songs, or they're in the industry already, but I don't, I don't see a lot of kids working day jobs. 
And I don't see them working. I mean, because I know I go out and I go to restaurants and I get, I know some of those people are musicians and songwriters. The one thing I'll say is I don't see them working with the same fire that they, I think they need to be a great um, artist. So what I mean by that is, like, I hated waiting tables. But I, damn it, if I didn't do it, the best I could do it. You right. know what I mean? It, it was a grind, but man, I was the best waiter. I was the best, when I was uh, chefing, I was, I was managing, you know, I was the head, uh, the catering chef at Belmont College when I was 25. Really? I was doing all of the catering for the whole school. The whole university? 25. Yeah. I was the, the head caterer. At, you know. Now, how were you qualified for that job? You just like oh, food? Oh, I've been doing that. I've been that was always my day gig since oh, I was fifteen. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and I had brothers that trained me, and, and you know what I mean. I could do. Yeah. And that was my first. And I in so you Boston. Can cook. You can cook. Oh yeah, I can cook. Oh yeah. Wow. You don't, I think you, you teach Kevin Murphy how to cook, didn't you? I don't need to teach Kevin Murphy. Hey, he's he teaching did. himself. He's he's formidable. I know. Yeah. You know, try his guac. Mm. <laughs> You should have had him bring the guac. Right. And then he's got the, the, the hot sauce. Yeah, he's yeah, and that's a little boy. And don't I'll plug that. Uh, it's a, a Mad Hatter. It's unbelievable hot sauce. I gotta get I mean, some. It's great. I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. Right? I think it is at yeah. Whole Foods. Um, or you could go to Mad Hatter Foods and contact Kevin. He should be Kevin. crushing it with the hot sauce. Game. It's a hard. It's a hard thing. Uh, they're there's having a lot of a competition. Little, there's competition. Uh, I think they're having a. Maybe an intercompany drama that I, I can't speak to. Yeah. Not with Kevin. Ke it's it's other people. But I think his goal is to maybe move it here. Mm. Um, yeah, and I would definitely get in on that. I would. I don't know what I could do, but I would. I would cover shifts, or you know what I mean. I, I I'm just. I'm itching to kind of get my hands on some food other than just a hobby. That's a great um, idea. You know, maybe one day open well, a restaurant. Joey Kramer started his own coffee line. There's yeah. Drummers have... Uh, yeah. We've canoodled a little bit. I can see myself having a restaurant in the far future. That'd be awesome. A little place, not nothing crazy. So you, you would create the menu and then mm -hmm. you would hire a chef, a lead chef. Or would um, you be doing the cooking? Or would you be just I, be like... I think I'm doing the cooking. I'd be like I Rocky. I would just be the guy greeting everyone. Hey, you sit down over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over. Yeah, some, this new, yeah, some pasta. New, no. new wine, right? And then yeah. and there's a guy in the back taking, you know... I would definitely have a guy in the back, but I would be involved for yes. sure. Because I, I love that... that that grunt. I love being what they call in the weeds, you know what yeah. I mean? When it's busy and there's just, no matter what you do, something's gonna suffer. You I was a pretty good waiter, because I love people and I don't mind sweating and hustling on yeah. somebody's behalf. And anything yeah. I do, I want to be good at it, but that wasn't the greatest. I mean, I, I, you, you would get in the weeds and I would start to get, oh my God, but, this, but they need this. They need, oh. No matter what, someone's gonna be pissed. Someone's always gonna be pissed. And yep. people in just innately are really bad tippers. Yeah. And it's, I, think it's a, I think everyone should wait tables one time because you I know it. always over tip. Yeah. Because I know how hard it is to put a living together doing yeah. that. Yeah. You know, don't be don't be cheap, people. Come on. Yeah. Um, Twenty percent. Absolutely. Every, and and everyone should do it for at least a few months. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, it will humble you. Yeah. You know, you'll have a new you'll have a new attitude on on people, and you, you'll be I don't know. It's just, it, it's definitely a regulating kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You know? Now we we were talking a little bit about Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. What is this? What's happening? And it seemed like he was just wow, so happy. Uh, you know, it seemed I like can't, he had a. Uh, it's it's crazy. That's the thing about seeming. Seeming. When things, seem, when things seem obviously. So, be careful what you think something is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I. What? It's hard for me to speak to that because I, I don't. I'm not in. Yeah. That I'm not in the the, the inner circle there. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I don't. I, I've known people that have committed suicide, mm -hmm. and um, so I I know it from this person's point of view. And sometimes people are really depressed, and you don't know. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's been happening it's, a lot. I, I don't. I, I think I'm doing a, the. I'm taking the higher road by just by not speaking to it. Sure. Because, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, just to be because, about happy drums. Well, huh? you know. Uh, yeah. Happy drums. Happy drums. Happy, Happy drums. drums. Hey, so uh, speaking of the, yeah. going back to the education thing, you took a break from it, but is that platform still up for people to get things? Your lessons? Um, can they download or No, stream but they can or? contact me. Gotcha. That's how I'm doing it. It's all, it's all word of mouth. What's the best right way now? for people to get in touch with you? Just through, uh, you, through Instagram. 
Yeah. Send me a message. Now, now I'm, what, I'm almost it, fully is, on Instagram. Isn't there an underscore in your the, the, your handle, or is it just your name? Yeah, it's just my name. Okay, easy. Yep. And then I am starting the fitness side. It's and it's called Ben Caesar Fitness. So if they want to know more about that, but I'm Instagram. Yeah, but it's so that, that you're doing your life now. You have to do two Instagram pages two Instagram. a day. Yeah, but it's completely separate. Yeah. It's and it's and I'm still watering it. Um, and that's a private, so you have to request it. Really? You know, yeah, because I don't want everybody to, you know, I don't want, I'm not ready to show, to, to be exercises. all that guy, like, here's me with a shirt, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm a little more yeah. humble about that. I but all, there is all that stuff is on there, but I'm not just opening that up to the, you know. I love it. Yeah. That's amazing. Until it's more developed. Yeah. Until the, 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 the content. I do have some stuff. I'm just trying to figure out what message to go with it. I think it's basically, you know, the aging is a choice and it doesn't have to be as complicated. Oh, you know, fitness there's so much folklore about it. And there's yeah. so many do this, don't do that. You got to do this many reps and this much time and all this stuff. And I'm so I'm, I'm trying to come up with a, a format that, that really works for me. That, that is uh, much more manageable and isn't so, um, do this, don't do that, you know. Maybe it's an app. Yeah, maybe it is an app. Yeah. Yeah. It's always an app. Yeah. Any last questions? Uh, nothing at the moment. How long have we been going? <clears throat> You've been going you're almost an hour and a half. Oh, oh that's shit. what we do. I can babble. That's what we do. Um, any last things you want to kind of promote? Anything coming up? The, the um, tour? Yeah, we have projects? Big, big, um, yeah, basically just the tour, you know. Uh, I don't think we have a tour name yet, but we're, it starts this week. Oh, it's starting. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. starting this week. Um, yeah. No, no I, tour name. No tour name. It's, yeah. I'm still how, thinking. How, that's what he does. He just... When he, when he has it, he wait, has wait, it. Wait a minute, it's starting this week and there's no... Well, it's just a one-off. It's a festival. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So it's like, we'll get through this festival and then we have a week off and then he'll think of it and it'll That's be on it. the trucks. and the Yeah, that, that was us. It was yeah. like time off after yeah. Vegas and then uh, yeah. spot dates that we had to rehearse for because we... Do we remember these songs? And yeah. then we have to... Oh. Then, and, then, and, then, and then all the, the television stuff yeah, to yeah. promote the new record and then going back to rehearsals. Yeah. It's crazy schedule. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But uh, you know, the thing I'd like to promote should, would just be the private teaching thing. You know, hit me up if you wanna if you wanna talk. Ben Caesar on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. S E S A R. Yep. yep, and I can do Skype or Skype if you business. live in Nashville, come to the house. You know, there's also a really stuff. good thing that you could be doing uh, that I should get you on, but it's a it's an app called Meat Hook, and it's M E E T. Yeah. And so I went I, to the uh, check it out. I've got it. Yeah. I haven't fully done it, but I went to the, you know, they came, were you here when they came to town? Yes. Uh, I, no, uh, no, you didn't. You must have been out on the road. Well, there. they came to town and yeah. Marco, Marco. Uh, poured uh, wine and grappa and pasta on everybody. And said, here, try this out. And, and check it. And it's it's really cool. Well, it's it's just all the e-commerce is handled on there. All the, yeah. the um, uh, and you can do last minute things. So if you have a, an hour layover in an airport yep. and the, wi the Wi-Fi is good, you can say like, hit me up. I'm available Are you right now. Are you? I use it, yeah. Does because it, has it? Because I, I like that I don't have to use Skype or I don't have to FaceTime or I don't have to give out my phone number. It's yeah. just like meat hook. Hit, hit, get me hooked on the app you on it? Or is it, is it well, happening? The, the thing is, is that what people will ask me, hey, do you teach lessons? And I say, download the meat hook app. They go, and then I say, when do you want to do it? How about Monday or Tuesday between 2 and 6 Central Standard Time? Let's do 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesday. And then I make myself available on the app. And then they go click and they they book it. Right, right. But I'll, but unless I make myself available at certain times, no one can book anything. Right, Because it has right. to be on our terms. Right, right, right. So if somebody contacts you and say, let's do a lesson. I live in Des Moines, Iowa. And then you agree on a time in right. your time zone. Right. And, um, and then you could book it. It's great. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have it, and I, I've just started doing the profile, so I'm gonna dig. I'm gonna, like to try it's to on the like list. That help with the, the list that doesn't exist. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, this was, this was so fun. I mean, yeah, man. Uh, just you know, just it's so cool to to talk about the the loyalty in the music business, yeah. the relationship in the music business, the journey that we that you've had in the last 19 years, and where you're going. And we hope you write that book, and uh, you know, keep teaching and keep inspiring, and yeah, keep playing traditional grip and. Can I keep vaping? Open, keep vaping and open your restaurant, man. So, so cool. Well, I guess that was it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 16 of Pick Rich's Brain. My guest, Ben Caesar. Of course, we are on iTunes, 
Stitcher, Google Play, and of course, YouTube, and what else? iTunes. Just go to richredmond.com forward slash podcast and pick your point. Oh, you can do that, yes. Uh, and uh, Jim, Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com. We love you, man. You guys are so good. Thank you. It's a good team, right? So Media friendly. <laughs> it's like so freaking frack, man. You have to practice that. What no, we no, we just we just have this. Uh, we made a clip so like a decade ago because I wanted to study voiceover. Yeah, so yeah. so and and uh, and Jim's got his hands on a lot of businesses. LED lighting. Oh, he's a pretty good little drummer. Pretty good little drummer. You should play in that band on the weekends. Why don't you uh, show us what you get? Show yeah. me what you got. <laughs> Drum roll. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the official Pick Rich's Brain podcast at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.